What Richard benefited from was what we call hand over hand assistance, so where I would place my hand over his to help guide the movement in the right plane of direction using the right force and I would grade that as the weeks went on and um, he needed less and less help. So initially Richard needed prompting to attempt to pick up the pencil and once he was able to reach and grasp the pencil he had difficulty manipulating the pencil within his hand and also orientating the pencil to the paper. Maybe should we turn it around so it's there we go. And then draw a line across it. Good. Lovely. That's okay, just the one. So his ability to use the arm in day-to-day -day tasks dramatically improved. Richard always had a passion for gardening. And now that he was able to move around more independently, he really threw himself back into it. But for me, there was a difficult balance and tension between encouraging him to do more, but also to hold him back so that he didn't overdo things. So you don't you think you've done enough? What? Don't you think you've done enough? Get Get I had to learn to step back and let him take risks, whatever the outcome might be. When we've talked to people who've been through the programme, they do describe it as intensive. They call it a boot camp. It's fatiguing, but actually there's something exhilarating about that. Being given the opportunity to work that hard is something that I think people really value. Six months after the Upper Limb program, Richard was making such remarkable progress that he was now able to use his right hand to copy a daily writing exercise. One. That's much better. That's much better. Two. Five of these. Six. Very good. Seven. Very good. Eight. Physically, Richard was now pretty independent, and so when we went for his final assessment at the Upper Limb Programme, he was able to walk in on his own, unaided. What's important about the programme is demonstrating change, so providing evidence that we make a difference. Because what's important is not just the ability to change after an intensive three-week programme, but actually what's absolutely key is that those gains are maintained. There aren't any other programmes that work with people this intensively, that delivers high dose, high intensity rehabilitation specifically for the upper limb. So our responsibility at a place like Queen Square is to show what's possible. And part of that is measuring what we do. So we have outcome scores at admission and at discharge, six weeks and six months. And if we can show that there are measurable, meaningful changes in a high proportion of people that come through that program, then our hope is that this will change the way rehabilitation is delivered. Richard's recovery had gone far beyond everyone's expectations, so much so that he could now even climb a flight of stairs. Slowly, Richard. So the scores, though, I mean, the scores have improved a lot. Yeah. So the action research arm test was yeah. 26 out of 57 when you came yeah. in. It's now 48 out of yeah. 57. So wow. That's improvement that's of 22 points. It is emotional. There's something about just giving people some hope, hope that we think is realistic, you know, and reopening those doors, which is, yeah, it's it, it is quite emotional. Lovely. No, but look at it. That's a, that's. Oh, right. It's really improved. That's incredible. Yeah.